Hi, what's up, y'all? What's poppin'? What's cracking? It's D-Boss React to this vid by Omizi. It's titled, Streamers Are Getting Delusional. Uh, somebody told me to react to this. When I reacted to Asian crashing out, someone said that in this vid, he talks about uh, how it's harder being a streamer than it is being a doctor. <laughs> so, sure, we're going to see what, what these people have to say as well. Now you've probably seen this conversation come up time and time again in the recent weeks as people who have never worked or only rarely worked some sort of 9 to 5 or traditional job are weighing in on if 9 to 5 is harder than streaming or if streaming is harder than a 9 to 5. Well listen, I want to give you the perspective of somebody who's doing both of them and tell the people who are participating in this conversation who don't have that perspective to shut the hell up. With so many different ways that are paraded on the internet with making money, people are wondering, should I continue to do a 9 to 5 or should I go one of these untraditional routes? They look at the perceived freedom, the flexibility, the money that you could potentially make and help. Honestly, the clout that you get from saying, hey, I do something non-traditional, especially because there's such a variety of ways that people can get into the streaming game. I mean, in the recent time, we've seen that streaming has transformed from the days of people playing video games or just chatting. IRL streaming is becoming really big, being half naked on camera while streaming. A lot of people are saying to themselves, well, if they can do it, why can't I? Especially if it doesn't add any value like Myra thinks. And that shit's harder than being a doctor, nigga. And well, all them doctors do is prescribe fucking medications, bro. But I went to the doctor for my fucking shoulder. All she tried to do was give me fucking medication. How do I fix my shoulder? If you don't know, point me in the direction to the nigga that would know. So you want Tylenol? No. How do I fix my shoulder? Nigga, send me to an MRI. Why am why am I doing your job? God damn it, man. That shit can't be that hard, bro. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> he he putting on extras, but I low-key feel him. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I have had very recent situations occur with doctors where they are just throwing meds at me. And I'm like, um, oh. like for example, I injured uh one of my knees really bad like some years ago. I had a traumatic incident occur. We're gonna get into that. Um, but it injured my knee and now when I'm like doing heavy squats and shit, it irritates it and I've done x-rays and there's like nothing that they can identify as wrong, like nothing's broken or torn or anything, but yeah, I just feel like it's not like, oh, let's find some <sighs> methods to help naturally heal your knee over time, like maybe some physical therapy or something. It's like, oh, here goes some meds. Throw these meds at you. I'm like, okay, then what? Like, this is clearly like a temporary fix. What happens after? I'm done. Okay, you put me on a month prescription. All right, after these pills are done, then what do I do? I got to ask these questions because, like, here you go. All right, is, is there anything else? What do I do after this? The fuck? <laughs> so that literally just happened. Very irritated by that. But, yes, that is something that happens a lot with doctors. But it doesn't mean that you know they don't work hard or they're incompetent or whatever the case you just have to find a good doctor honestly it ain't always easy Agent, agent, agent. I don't see how we can say somebody like a doctor who is doing years of research, eight years of schooling, countless hours on sick patients, helping them, curing them, or pointing them in the right direction. I had a doctor looking on Google too before. I kid you not. And I got Kaiser, all right? They supposed to be like good quality insurance bullshit. Had a doctor literally like looking on her phone. As she, I'm like, girl, I could have did that. The like, fuck? It's some sort of easy thing to do. Now I get it. I don't want to take this away from agents or anybody's individualistic experience because sometimes it doesn't feel like the right treatment plan. And ultimately, you come yeah. up with your own treatment plan. But I'm not going to say all oh, doctors are this way or all oh, doctors. I'm not going to put them in a category. So I, I, I agree with what he's about to say as well than what the doctor may have prescribed you. Hey, I'm a proponent of you know your body better than anybody else. But none of that negates the fact that the doctor's job is hard. Yeah. Now, I don't want to dig too deep on agents' individualistic situation. We want to tackle the real meat and potatoes. Is streaming harder than a nine to five? Hmm, no. I think people involved in this conversation have their own sort of bias. So I think that's why my perspective is just a little bit different. As somebody who's actively working a nine to five and somebody who also streams slash makes content at the same time. And trust me when I say this, if you scan the majority of Twitch, Kick, Rumble, any streaming platform, a lot of the content is low lift. Think about it, reactionary content isn't the hardest thing in the world. Having somebody else create the content for you for you to give your simplistic opinion on, I don't see anything difficult about it. Like video games on streams, I don't see anything difficult about that. Or hell, just doing IRL streams where you're walking around living your day-to-day -day life. I don't see anything hard about that. Now, when we talk about this 1% of 1% of streamers who are actually putting in 8 to 15 hours a day or doing these extra extravagant streams like a Kai Sinat, like a I show Speed, where they are mixing in IRL elements, where they are mixing in scripted out content yeah, into their streams, or just living a zany, wacky life that'll have them traveling for hours on hours on end, then yes, I could say that streaming can be extremely hard and I won't take that away from them but we've got to think about that how many streamers actually fit into that category another portion of this conversation that people don't really understand is they don't even know what all the nine to fives are but we have a pretty good grasp of what all the potential streams are you have easy jobs what would you consider an easy job cashier okay let's say cashier then you have a hard job what's a hard job I think off the top of my head like 
a Secret Service agent. See, this is something that I've learned since I've graduated college and have stepped out into the real world. A lot of people don't know about any jobs that aren't front-facing. And what I mean by that is the things that get the world running that are done behind the scenes that most people don't know about. Do you think that Amazon packages just go from facility to facility? No. There are logistics centers that are open 24 hours a day that people work 14 or 12 or 10 hour shifts on on a daily basis. But you don't see stuff like that. You're only going to see stuff when you go into the stores, buy the product, and deal with the cashier. But that's why you think the jobs are easy. Right now, I'm in a hotel room because I'm working 14 hour shifts in a distribution center. And I can tell you for a fact, lifting those boxes is not easy. And I ultimately think that there are different struggles within all these jobs that most people can't even contextualize because they really. And I feel like people don't understand too that there is a big difference between something being simple and easy. Those are different things. It's like weight loss, for example. Everybody says how that's easy. It's not easy. It's simple because you literally just eat in a calorie deficit and you work out and that works for most people okay so you can say that it's simple but actually executing that and the details that goes into it the actual logistics that are involved are not easy at all so they, they are not the same so i feel like that can also be applied to content creation as well it, it, it's simple this isn't rocket science but when you get into the details of it, it's not it's not easy. So I don't think people understand the difference. Can't see or understand these jobs. Another reason is that they're just too young. Black Boy Max put out a tweet that was talking about streaming being so much harder than all these other jobs. And I thought to myself two things. One, what would Max classify as a regular job? And two, Max is 21 years old. That would be somebody who is just about getting ready to get up out of college, right? So the only jobs that person would be qualified for would be- I didn't know he was 21. I thought he was jobs, older. Those were laborious and tedious mm. and all those things. But they never get to the level mm. of getting into corporate mm. life or Excuse working me. at distribution centers in a big meaningful Tired. way, being up the corporate ladder on <laughs> no, these different dark. scales. So they don't know the complexities that those jobs have. So while they may have the full spectrum of what a streamer is they've been at the bottom they work to the middle and now they're at the top they don't know what the spectrum is for somebody that's working a job streaming is a harder job than a regular nine to five let's say a streamer has a bad day on stream right they can just end their stream but if you're in retail and customer service we can't walk away from the customer I see, but see that's not what a lot of people do though they don't just end the stream they they they, they do push past that the people who are uh successful at it you don't really have the option to be like eh, i don't really feel like it so i'm gonna just chill like that's not something that i feel like a lot of consistent uh youtubers or streamers are doing they're just not like even me like i'm i'm gonna push past having a bad day like obviously every day isn't a good day for me there are times when i'm sad there are times when i'm going through shit but i gotta work <laughs> so you know what i'm gonna do I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit my ass in front of this goddamn camera and i'm gonna react to these videos and i'm, I'm gonna get the shit done and i'm gonna push past it anyway when i really don't feel like it when i'm tired when i barely had any sleep and i got a million other things going on in my life i'm still gonna allocate time to this so again i just feel like there's a lot of like People just don't know <laughs> until you're actually in it and doing it. You just don't know. Again, it's simple, but it's not It's not necessarily easy for people who are consistent. In to do the most simplest thing and get 200 viewers. And See, I'm not going to say that's it like is working simple. hard. If you're like Aspen Gold, you like plan out your streams heavily, then okay, yeah, maybe it's a little more taxing. <laughs> if they are really getting just as many views as somebody that's doing educated or more difficult content, that means that they have something different to offer than just intelligence. Maybe it's charisma. Put Charlie next to Ludwig. They're both really <laughs> smart. But Charlie tends to lean more into informative content. Ludwig will sit and watch TikToks and get the same amount of viewers. Mm -hmm. Does that make that one more important or harder? No. A big portion in the conversation about is streaming harder than a nine to five is the whole concept that you have to be charismatic, energetic, and have that genesis quad in order to attract viewers to you. And I know that they don't know this, but this also exists in the world of nine to fives. In order for you to get some sort of employment or level up on the scale as to where you are in your life career-wise, you have to be charismatic. You have to put no! on necessarily i mean obviously this varies on a case-by-case -case basis but from my experience and trust me I'm, i've had a lot of jobs okay if you've really been consistently watching me you probably have heard me <laughs> talk about i've had over 20 something jobs okay i've had lots of jobs and i've had a lot of corporate jobs as well when i tell you i was never like nice to those people fuck y'all i don't want to be here all right i want to talk to y'all of course i'm gonna be fake during the interview i'm gonna be real nice bubbly yeah great Co-worker, da, da, da. I'm going to feed you all those lies <laughs> until I get in the dough and I get the job. I get comfortable after orientation, all that shit. Oh, fuck out of here. No, I don't want to eat lunch with you bitches. Fuck y'all. Like, I don't want to be cool with none of y'all. I don't want to be here. I'm going to do my work and I'm going to get up out of here. And that works. I've never gotten fired for that. Like, <laughs> you know, but I mean, he is talking about like moving up the ladder, blah, blah, blah. And sure, that, that goes into, you know, you got to be nice to people, kiss ass. But that's just never been what I was about. If anything, I would just find a job that had higher pay.
but I'm not about to kiss nobody ass to work up the ladder. Fuck y'all. Um, so I feel like most people do coast through their jobs and they're not there actually trying to be nice and be likable and do all that shit. They ain't trying to do that. Most people are just comfortable going to work and like doing the bare minimum because <laughs> they don't like their job anyway. So, hmm. but on, on, when you're a content creator, you don't have that option. I can't show up and, and just be dry and, and say absolutely nothing and just watch the video front to back and never give an opinion or never add anything y'all would be like fuck out of here this is boring like I, I can't I don't have that option to do that but again I'm not complaining I feel like it's a really bad idea for uh content creators to complain to their audience because they, they don't get it they won't get it and there's nothing wrong with that they're not supposed to get it because they don't have that life but it's like what is the point of complaining like bro they got regular jobs they they gonna look at you like you ungrateful fuck out of here I don't want to hear this you know so like I, I said this before, I think it's best that they complain to their content creator friends. Like, keep that in y'all circle. But when y'all start saying goofy shit like this online, like, you're going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. Your audience are never going to be able to relate to it. So just just shut up. <laughs> and entertain people on a daily basis or you'll fall out of grace in their favor. It's more than just your technical abilities or skills. Sure, I might be the best coder in the world. I'm here to tell you that the people that are at the top of these totem poles aren't necessarily the best. Your soft skills go a long way. Also, if you are really, really good too, because I've also had this problem at a job where I actually was putting in effort and being good at my job. <laughs> that was the last time I made that mistake. And they were trying to give me more responsibilities and trying to like, you know, uh, uh, increase my role and shit. And I'm just like, no, 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 I didn't ask for this. I want to keep doing what I'm doing. Y'all trying to make me do more work. Fuck, I was like, okay, cool. Let me fall back. Let me stop being good at this job, you know? Cause I wasn't, I wasn't likable like at work. I wasn't nice at all. I didn't talk to nobody. So they wasn't trying to, you know, give me a raise based on that. Like, they were doing it because they like, oh, she's really efficient at this. And I'm like, I'm about to quit. <laughs> Y'all trying to give me more job responsibilities? I'm about to quit. And that's exactly what I did. I was a terrible employee. Horrible. That are in play for both streaming and nine to fives aren't talked about because people want to side on their argument to make it seem like their life is just so much harder. Content creation is harder than your nine to five. Well, shut up. See, Lil Ellen, he's the problem, okay? He's the problem with, with the content creators. Shut up. Stop making content like this. Cause you do trigger people and it's, this is so pointless. Tell this to your streamer friend. Constantly creative with new video ideas, trying to make footage look good, getting new shots, taking many, many takes over and over. It can get to be a lot. So yeah, I'm tired. Now don't get me wrong. I do get tired from creating content. The multiple takes kill me sometimes. I'm and the tired fact that I have to do stuff this so sometimes, what? I don't have the energy to do because I was doing something else later in the day is very prevalent in this industry. But that also exists in the life of a nine to five. If we're talking about people that make big expansive pieces of work or stuff that does take in real life action that is vigorous and very draining on you, then for sure. I think that I would classify that as harder than a lot of nine to five. But sometimes that only makes up some of what they do. I think with kind of this IRL stuff, yeah, that's definitely harder than a nine to five. But when he's reacting to somebody's video, I can't think that that's harder than being like a middle school teacher. I think job volatility is something that the entertainment Excuse industry me. has always suffered with. Especially when you're at the top of your game, you get hit with these golden handcuffs, whether it be from the likes, the views, the clicks, or from the money that you're actually making. And then once that fall off comes, you don't know what to do, so you start pivoting left, right, and sideways. As opposed to people that are like police officers who can have as many open cases as they want and nothing happened to them due to like qualified immunity. Yeah, there's definitely a case that says job security and job volatility is much crazier and much lower for the security part when it comes to the content creation side than it is for the nine to five side it's harder than a regular job not saying that this is easy but it's not easier than a uh, than it is for the nine to five side it's harder because than... people streamers saying stream is harder than nine to five explain why it's not a regular job not saying that this is easy but it's not easier than a nigga having to wake up on somebody else's schedule i'm not gonna lie i used to think that it was harder than having a job i used to a hard worker is a hard worker so if you're a hard worker as streamer i do think it's equivalent to you being a hard worker at a job you put in the hours you pick the content you pay for the content you, you sit there you do your thing but not easier than a regular job streaming harder than a real job <laughs> But I feel like this is so this is so vague. Y'all keep saying a regular job, a nine to five. Like that could that could be that's a million different things. <laughs> One part I've had many jobs, like I said, and definitely some of those were a lot easier than others. I my last job I actually had before I even uh started doing YouTube. Well, while I was doing YouTube, uh, was like one of the easiest jobs. And it was like my most highest paying job at the time. But it was pretty, it was pretty easy. So, it, this varies. So, them making these blanket statements are, is also goofy. Oh man, I was 
I'll be working hard. Bro, I don't. You all sit here and scream every day. Do you know what I get to do for a living, bro? I get to hang out with my people four hours a day. Bro. Period. I wake up at like 2 p.m. every day, get up, don't do nothing all day, and I sit here and scream, bro. Streaming is not harder than a 9 to 5. Streaming is a hobby that you loved up and you made it your career. Making content is a hobby, something you do on your fucking free time. Never compare having to get up and go I to work. I, with I think it's really so. good to work compare. With somebody else say so. You gotta ask somebody else if you can relax. I be dead ass super grateful. I be telling y'all I appreciate y'all a lot what real fucking life is. I appreciate someone like Duke's perspective in this conversation because we know from his military background that he at least has some wherewithal or understanding as to what it takes to work with a lot of people would consider a real job. And as much as he talked about how easy the job may have been in the military, he might have been sitting behind a desk, it's the fact that you are still under someone's control as opposed to when you are streaming mm -hmm. or creating content. There That's is a big, big part. Where if you do not post, then you have a level of freedom that cannot come from having a 9 to 5 job. And I'm not going to say that some 9 to 5 jobs don't come with some level of freedom, some level of job security, some level of flexibility, but there's a totally different level between doing that and having to put in your hours, submit your time, call somebody, and not cutting your camera on because you just don't feel like it for the next three days. If I didn't show up for three days, I would have a job, period. I cannot believe working a 9 to 5 is real life. The, the tasks that I was just asked to do, I don't even want to explain it because I'm embarrassed to say that this is what I do for a living, but I'm going to tell you for a laugh, you know the abbreviated, like months, like OCT, I'm having to write out October and make that standard across a lot of fucking verbiage. Like, wow, this is how we're supposed to be successful in life by working for someone else's success first of all and then doing stupid ass tasks that make me feel like a literal piece of shit because how am i having an impact in the world no one knows that i'm doing this i'm sitting behind my computer typing I'm doing absolutely nothing to help others. And trust me, I think that there are elements of nine to five work that are what we would consider easy. But I think what's troubling to me is the fact that how easy can get rewarded in the content creation sphere versus how easy is looked at in the nine to five sphere. I think a lot of people see easy work and say that they can do something that's much harder or much more rewarding and then reap the benefits from it. But where I think that they turn and get nasty is the fact that they take that and then turn on its head and shit on the regular nine to five working class. And it's only because they crave the things that the entrepreneurship lifestyle has to offer, supposedly, but they don't really realize the grind that actually comes into the entrepreneur lifestyle. What if your husband or whoever didn't aspire to be a boss and they said i like yeah, some people are like that eighty thousand a year job or fifty thousand a year job like i get fulfillment for this i love what i do every day i come home happy i go to work mm. happy i want to go to work what's the problem with that he gotta want to be a boss i think for me personally for my husband i, I wouldn't want a husband up that way but that's just me so you don't want a happy person you would rather him want to be a boss and deal with a bunch of whatever that he don't even want to deal with than to love his job and go to work and say, but, I but love that's, my job. But, but that's what home. I would like. That's what I'm attracted to. Will that's you? what I wanted to see in a man. This story is about two I people mean, seeing two different perspectives and have a limiting view on both of them. Sure, it sounds cool to have a boss, husband that's a CEO, et cetera, et cetera, until you get into that life where he's missing out on calls, birthdays, celebrations, anniversaries, and nights in your bed because he's doing boss-like things. Mm -hmm. And sure, streaming may seem tiresome and difficult and unfulfilling <laughs> until you're in somebody's warehouse lifting boxes for the past 15 hours and not getting shit done creatively, and honestly, your brain is rotting from the inside out. <laughs> I'm speaking from personal experience. I'd like to say I don't know why these people are craving the entrepreneurship lifestyle, but it's ultimately because it's been portrayed as this most fabulous thing on the internet but these are for people who don't have any experience in it and don't know how damning it can be somehow society has told us that working a nine-to-five is the worst thing that you could do which is ridiculous the odds are you will have to work a nine-to-five to support yourself and that's okay that doesn't make you a failure that doesn't mean your life will be miserable it yeah. doesn't mean you'll never be able to be rich one day learning in industry is the best way to actually eventually be able to start a company really the route for entrepreneurship is truly not for everyone you don't make a lot of money in the beginning you sacrifice crazy make people mad at you because you can't be at these events or these functions you're gonna miss out on a lot of good times family times etc etc until that one day hopefully you get lucky strike gold and then you've made it to this promised land where you are making good solid money on content creation and everybody's number for good solid money is totally different so i don't want to put a number on that but then what people don't realize is that you have to maintain that for a lot of years in your life that mm -hmm. most people don't get to see we often talk about people who don't use their degrees when they go to college and get a job mm -hmm. but we never talk about the content creators who made it big were only lasting for a couple years and then have fallen off a cliff those people have money problems as well even though they got a lot of money in this content creation game look at boogie boogie was one of the biggest content creators on the platform and all of that stuff went up and went straight down to the toilet since 2018 boogie 2988's career has been in a youtube death spiral the main reason is his Mr. Rogers mask slipping, revealing his true persona of an awful manipulative person. October 2022 was when Boogie entered financial hell. Boogie uploaded a video stating how he had become broke due to losing all his money in the crypto market, e-begging his audience for donations due to his reckless decision. And he got content creators like Gento from the 2K days. A lot of great content. I was a lot of money too. I ain't getting on camera and begging shit. The instability of entrepreneurship is not I hope it goes back up, child. I don't think it necessarily makes it harder because everything comes with challenges. I just don't think it's something that shouldn't be romantic. Damn bad. Damn bad. Damn bad, child. Every morning.
They come in the office and they're like, cool, you still can. And I be like, girl, I'm going. I like, should have sold my shit in March. Like, Ooh, I was up, up in March. Why are you here? Baby, because it's a job. And well, you got bills. And sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I have my master's in mental health counseling. I have my master's in... I'm going to head out. But basically, shut up, everybody. Shut up. <laughs> People are always trying to compare what they do to what others do. And this is better. This is worse. This is easier. This is harder. Like, shut up. I don't even know why this conversation is still a thing. Like, everybody stay in their own lane. Do what makes you happy and leave it at that. We don't need to compare anything. Like, for what? Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.